Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sean from the US. So I'm gonna meet a new friend of mine. Her name is Kat. She's from the UK and she has an amazing YouTube channel. She speaks Korean really well and makes really interesting content about cultural differences and her life here in Seoul. 사실은 영국에 이런 힘들거나 더울 때 먹는 음식 딱히 없는 것 같은데 약간 달고 기분 좋은 거 많이 먹는 것 같아요. In this video, we're gonna get to know her a little bit better by speaking to her in her native language, which she doesn't often use in video. Anyway, she's waiting for us now. Let's go and meet her. There she is. Hey, Kat, what's Hello. going on? I've yeah. seen your video so much. Yes, yes. But like you're a lot taller than I imagined. So you're are you. <laughs> you are you as well. <laughs> How tall are you anyway? I am 172. 172? Oh, hi, I can see myself. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, shall we take a walk? Yes, let's go. So Kat, I've seen a lot of your YouTube videos. Your Korean is amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's true, it's true. So how long have you been in Korea now? Two and a half years total, I think. Now you're living in Seoul pretty permanently, I guess, right? Yeah, for now, like, I don't really have any plans to go back to England. So you speak Korean really well. What do you think about the Korean language in general? You think it's easy to learn, hard to learn? A lot of English speakers, they always say, like, Korean is one of the most hard languages to learn. But I don't really agree with that. Yeah, I found French, like, a lot more difficult. Oh, I've interesting. I've learned French for probably a total of four years. I can't say a word of French. I think, like, maybe motivation is also part of it because I was really motivated to learn Korean. Oh, for sure. Yeah. When you're learning a language, motivation is huge. Yeah, I think, like, French, maybe I was just trying to pass exams and that's mm. it. Actually, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. In England, do, do people mostly learn French or Spanish? Ah, it's kind of like 50-50, I would say. Okay. Um, it just depends on your school and sometimes you get to pick. I think these days, maybe Chinese is becoming like more of a thing as well. That's so. actually really smart to do that. Yeah. yeah. haven't seen anyone learning Korean in school. <laughs> Not yet. But <laughs> in university, like so many people are joining Korean language courses every year. Oh, wow. It's really amazing. Very interesting. There's kind of a stereotype of American that we only speak English. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, England has that same stereotype oh. within Europe? Absolutely. Oh, oh, they're English. Oh, Got to speak to them in English. Whereas like other people from other countries speak like four or five languages. Does that exist for you guys too? Yeah, we're absolutely the same. <laughs> we are famous in Europe for just not speaking other people's languages. Okay. Terrible. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to be famous for. But then if you, if I look at my French friends, like. They can speak really good English just mm -hmm. from what they learned in school. Interesting. Whereas even if we do learn French or German or whatever in school, I feel like our standard is not very good. And I feel like particularly speaking, it's just like non-existent. Hmm. So, yeah, it's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, I, I'll share that embarrassment with you. <laughs> well, it's getting a little hot out here. I think we could find a nice cafe. Yay! What do you say? I say yes. All right, cool. Let's do it. Alright, Kat, so we got to the cafe. You want to go inside? It's pretty hot out, right? Yeah, it's boiling, guys. Yeah, yeah let's guys, get inside before we melt. Let's go. Alright, let's go. Wow, this place is awesome. <laughs> wow, look at all these cakes. We got one of those lemon cakes. And then you got an ice americano and I got an ice coconut latte. Oh, thirsty. I'm so excited. Our drinks and our cupcake has come out. Yeah. Here's the coconut, lemon cupcake, and ice americano. Ooh. So you've been living here on and off, you were saying? Uh, two years, maybe like almost three years. Mm. Have you developed any Korean habits while living here? Maybe like gesture-wise or your manners or things you say when you like bump your arm or knee? <laughs> People always tell me that I make very Korean listening noises. Even when I'm speaking English. Yeah. So if you're talking about, mmm, mmm, -hmm. yeah, mmm, oh, I will still do this even if I'm speaking English. Yeah. And people who are not Korean will tell me like, why right? you sound like Korean even though you're speaking English. I think in England, if you're listening to someone, you listen very quietly. You maybe nod your head, but the way you signal listening is 
being quiet. Yes. But I found like some of my friends, I will be being quiet and listening very intensely. And but I'm not doing these sounds, so they feel like I'm not listening ah. because just like the listening. I don't I'm even know how to talk this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The listening yeah. code of West behavior. versus the East. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It is different. Yeah. That's a really good one. Yeah. So now, even when you speak English, you kind of do it too sometimes. Right? Yeah. <sighs> I'd say I'm definitely guilty of that one as well. <laughs> I think that's one of the first things that people pick up when they come to Korea. Yeah. Like as far as I've seen in like my international friend groups and stuff. Yeah. I think like even before you know Korean, <laughs> you start with these kind of listening sounds, I guess. Right on. Yeah. Cool. I like to eat spicy food when I'm stressed. Mm. So <laughs> the first thing I Is think that is something that you've started to notice as you've lived, been living here? Yeah. Definitely. Really? I go, Ooh, oopsie! I'm sorry, let me get a... You just did one. I go. I go, I go. I go. Was that on purpose? Yeah! <laughs> I planned that. I dropped the fork. I dropped the fork. Look, it's all dirty, guys. Ew. Yeah, I got, I got the new fork. Okay. Yeah, it's a clean. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? So you've been living here and you've noticed that you've started to eat spicy food as a way to relieve stress. Yeah, and I'm not sure what's triggered this. I'm not sure if it's because we learned in class that Korean people eat spicy food when they're stressed, or I'm not sure if it's something I picked up from my friends. I think it's like a combination of the two. Yeah. Yeah, so like, when I'm stressed, the first thing I think is, oh, I should go get some dakpa. Mm. <laughs> dakpa, eh? Mm -hmm. I don't like that at all. So good. Oh, I don't understand. Why do people like takpai? So good. It's What's the appeal? Okay, so here's the thing. Like, I was really scared of them before I ate it. But firstly, it's like spicy in a way that means you can't think of anything else. Interesting. Okay. That's why it's really good for like stress and stuff. <laughs> and huh. then the texture. Like, I don't like the ones with bones, but the texture of the ones without bones, it's very... It's chewy. Chewy yeah. and... Gelatinous. Like, yeah, gelatinous, but in a nice way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I just feel like the whole texture and taste is very good for stress. So there's a big stress component to this. Yeah. Noticing. <laughs> good. Uh oh. Great answers. Oh, and this as well. Ice Americanos. Oh, that's rather not a big, than warm ones. That's not a big thing in the UK. Mm. In recent years, like it's got a lot more mainstream, but a few years ago you couldn't really get ice americano in England. So your standard americano, if you ask for it, would be a hot americano, and then often they would put milk in without asking because that's how a lot of English people drink it. Part of my family is from Ireland, and mm -hmm. we love our tea, oh, yeah. and we always put milk in the tea. Yeah, yeah. just like England. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. So I wanted to ask you something that I'm always curious about. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of English friends here in South Korea and I've noticed something whenever they're teachers, they kind of get a little bit annoyed that like a lot of the schools are like, can you teach them American English? And so I'm just wondering, what is that relationship like between England and the US? I feel like there's definitely some kind of camaraderie. There's also a little bit of competition. Yeah. Uh, what do you have to say about that? I would also say like there's a little bit of like a rivalry aspect I feel like. Yeah. I don't know how you guys learn it in school but like how we learn it in school is that was English people. <laughs> Actually it's really wrong the way they taught it in English school. Okay. But <laughs> it was English people they wanted to do some different kind of Christianity and uh, they went on a ship and okay. they went to the US and then English people became American people hmm. so originally they were English people obviously this is wrong for so many reasons because mm -hmm. first Native Americans and second people came from all over to make the US right yeah oh, for sure but, but you know England definitely had a huge 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 influence probably the main influence yeah. and there's still a lot of descendants of English people living in the US but yeah it's a very simplistic yeah. way to look at it. like for me my mom is her family's from Ireland. My father's from Puerto Rico and I'm American. But yeah, like a lot of people escaped hardships from their country, like yeah. Italians. There's tons of Italians in yeah. the US. Irish people. Irish. There's lots of uh, Germans actually, German Americans, yeah. Native Americans, yeah. English Americans, a lot of French people in certain pockets like Louisiana, New Orleans. Mm. 
uh, a lot of Mexican influence. Yeah. And of course, uh, the Africans from Africa who are now African Americans, yeah. their descendants of all contributed to make America what it is. Exactly. Very complicated, yeah. But I think like the simplistic British way of looking at it is, oh, America is our little brother. But now America is doing better than us. Everyone's talking about them and not us. And they speak a, t a slightly different kind of English than us. And we were the first, so we must have the best kind of English, right? Mm. I think it's this kind of mindset. Whereas- We were the first. Yeah, we yeah. were the first. What are they doing? They're just- they're just pale imitations. They're That's ruining the language. <laughs> but then you look at like some studies and stuff and people actually say the American English is more close to what like our old fashioned English actually was. Mm, interesting. So yeah, these kind of fighting between Americans and English people about like whose English is proper English. I guess you can't really decide unless you go mm. back in a time machine yeah. and listen the people I guess. Yeah and also language changes and many yeah. many countries speak Chinese and there's many dialects and variations of that to Spanish there's so many countries that speak Spanish. Yeah you can't um, say like I don't know like Guatemalan Spanish is worse than Spanish Spanish right. because yeah. it's just different. It is different yeah. What about you do you feel a little bit of rivalry I would, personally? I wouldn't say that I feel rivalry yeah but I don't like being mistaken for an American person. Interesting, okay. Because I'm not an American person. Okay. That's like being a Korean person being mistaken for a Japanese person. Yeah. Like, it's not my nationality. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we are very similar culturally in many aspects, but we're for also sure. different in yeah. some aspects. And yeah, I guess like my background has made me who I am. So yeah. if I had been born in America and I was American Catherine, maybe I would be different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't think it's like an insult if someone calls me American, but I think it's wrong because it is wrong. <laughs> mm, interesting. So you're living in Korea now. What are your plans for the rest of your time here? So basically, just keep doing what I'm doing, basically. Like YouTube. I'm, yeah, YouTube, modeling. Modeling. That's what makes me happy, I guess. Like, I can't imagine doing another job at this time. You're so good at it, yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's like every day is different and that's something that really is good for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically keep doing that, see what happens. If I fail, I can always go back to England, I can always go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. you can teach Korean in English. I can teach Korean <laughs> in England, I can teach English in Korea. There's yeah. I just, I guess I'm just taking it slow. You're in a great position right now. Yeah. yeah. What's it like filming a video yeah. in English? Oh, it's really fun actually because I don't have to think that hard. Yeah, I you don't have to worry about like saying something wrong. Yeah, exactly. Because technically, I know English. Yeah. It's fun. It just felt like hanging out. Mm. Wait on you. I had a blast too. Let me walk you to the subway or wherever you gotta go. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. Bye. All right, Kat, we're back. I had a blast. This was so fun. Yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, right on. We'll do it again. Yes. See you next time. Right on. Right. That's very American. Is it? <laughs> right on. I feel so awkward to say that. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I sound so English. Okay. Right on. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll catch you next time. Bye. All right, have a good one. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Sean. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>